Most people think they could identify a psychopath from the stereotypes we see portrayed on television and in films the crazed, loud, violent person who was a loner at school. It is estimated that are around 300,000 to 400,000 psychopaths in Britain alone. But someone with psychopathic traits, according to AC experts, is not generally a loner or a criminal they are more likely to be a person who makes friends easily, blends in and appears just like everyone else. As neuroscientist Abigail Marsh says this is what makes a psychopath so dangerous. Abigail said one of the indicating factors of psychopathy is risky behavior a trait many inherit from their mothers. One of the biggest risks is having a biological mother who is fearless, added Abigail, who has studied the brains of children and adults who have psychopathic traits. With children whose mothers tend to take risks, there is a link to psychopathy. We know psychopathy is strongly inherited. Recent studies have shown the influence of a fearless maternal link is a factor. Abigail explores the idea of altruism and psychopathy in her book Good for Nothing Image 2017 Georgetown University According to social neuroscientist Abigail Marsh, children who show risky behavior are more prone to becoming psychopathic and they inherit this from their mother's image blend images Studies of psychopathy have shown that 50-70% to 70 of psychopathic traits are due to genetics. Other factors, such as upbringing are also important as research has found a supportive home environment can prevent children who may have some psychopathic traits getting involved in antisocial behavior and developing this. Abigail said one of the key traits of psychopaths is that they're not that easy to spot, and they believe they are just like everyone else. She added psychopaths are not usually children who don't have friends. They often make friends easily but don't keep them very well. They don't tend to be an angry loner. We have had children coming who seem so incredibly sweet, I would have them babysit my children. Most of the children I've worked with you would NT be able to tell who is who. That's why they are dangerous. It's not obvious they are so dangerous. People who are psychopathic also tend to be narcissistic. They like being referred to in these glorifying terms. Most people believe others are more or less like themselves. The perception is that psychopaths don't care about others and everyone is similar to them. They tend to assume everyone is more or less like them. A psychopath is known to lack empathy, which makes them volatile. They are also likely to be liars and incredibly manipulative. And what makes psychopaths more difficult to spot, is that this behavior which often includes callousness and sometimes sadism is only shown at certain times. You don't have to be sadistic to be a psychopath, added Abigail. Most likely you will see their callousness when something crops up that will motivate them to act. If there's an opportunity for material gain they will take action and won't care about it. People can behave violently or antisocially to get something they want, and that's when psychopathic traits are most likely to be expressed. Risky behavior is inherited image i.e. being harmful to others or aggressive is not particular to people who are psychopathic. What's unusual is that it does tend to be more targeted to extract some kind of gain. They find that lying and manipulating results in gaining whatever you want. Abigail said the test for psychopathy is the same in adults as it is in adolescents. Psychopathy is a developmental disorder, with tendencies most likely to appear in youth. Abigail said of all the adults she studied, they showed psychopathic tendencies as children. But she did caution against stigmatizing young people who show these traits but do not end up becoming adult psychopaths their environment, upbringing or development negating these early tendencies. She cites one example of a boy who appeared very tough and had been in a number of gun battles who was due to be tested by them. But when it came to the data screen his brain as part of their studies into psychopathy he was terrified and apologized because he couldn't help them. Researchers found he was really just simulating being a tough fighter for survival rather than being a psychopath. Most of the children we have worked with have pretty constant problems at school, added Abigail. They don't really care about how well they do at lessons. We often find lots of low-level truancy and if there's an opportunity to cause trouble or a reason to hurt somebody they are generally happy to do it. We had one child we worked with who broke a bottle over his teacher's face in front of the entire classroom. She needed seven stitches and the child had planned out the whole attack, brought the bottle to school with him. Another child threw a fake grenade into the local library, making staff think they were being attacked by terrorists. Abigail explores the idea of altruism and psychopathy in her book Good for Nothing through her work. Abigail has been able to study the brains of psychopathic children and identify how activity in specific regions can denote psychopathy. 
In the amygdala, which is an area of the brain important in recognizing fear, psychopathic children showed little activation when shown an image of someone in distress indicating they have little ability to empathize. Abigail, who studies both psychopaths and altruists, said the two types of people are connected by an almost mirror image with altruists intrinsically sensitive to people's feelings, and psychopaths the opposite. Altruists, according to AC Abigail, show a high degree of sensitivity to other people's distress. She added they are not nervous wrecks, but they do seem to have an above-average sensitivity to fear. What's most interesting about them when they see other people's fear they seem to be able to initially respond to it. We know part of their brain is more active and responsive. If there was just a fully-fledged fear response, we would expect what they would try to do is escape. But in response to other people's fear they are motivated to help in a way of overcoming fear. They have a tendency to respond to others' distress with care and helping. This is not limited to a small subset of the population. Most people will have this emotion. But what makes them really unusual is they will have that response for people they do not know. Almost all altruists don't like being a hero. A truly altruistic person doesn't see it as them having done anything special. Good for nothing from altruists to psychopaths and everyone in between by Abigail Marsh is available now from Amazon.